Hi, my name is Jesse Finicaro, and today I will be presenting our paper, Embedding Dimension of Polyhedral Losses with Ralph Angelo and Bo Wagner for the Conference on Learning Theory in 2020. So machine learning is often used as a predictive tool. And supervised models tend to learn from a hypothesis that minimizes average loss over a training data set. Loss functions take predictions and measure error against observed outcomes. And here we focus on settings with a finite set of labels and predictions, such as classification, ranking, and structure prediction problems. Discrete loss functions are often intuitive to construct, but hard to optimize, such as zero one loss. We denote these with script L. Instead, we optimize a corresponding surrogate loss, such as hinge or logistic loss, uh, denoted with the capital L. And these surrogates take dimension, take reports in d-dimensional reals, and so we'll call the surrogates themselves d-dimensional. One example of this is a variation of the zero one loss that we will call the abstain loss, where you get punishment zero if you predict an outcome and are correct, punishment one if you predict an outcome and are wrong, and a lesser punishment alpha somewhere between zero and one if you uh, abstain from predicting, denoted by the bot. And so ideally, we want a surrogate such that minimizing empirical risk of the surrogate corresponds to minimizing empirical risk of the discrete loss. In particular, we want the surrogate to be calibrated. But calibration is really a proxy. So we want to optimize, as we said, a surrogate with good empirical risk minimization bounds. And one requirement for such bounds is consistency. In the finite prediction setting, however, Bartlett et al. in 2003 and 2006, um, as long, along with Zhang in 2014 and Tuari and Bartlett in 2007, sorry, Zhang in 2004, um, show that consistency is equivalent to calibration in the finite prediction setting. And Finnecaro et al. in 2019 show that embedding implies calibration. And this embedding setting is where we'll be focusing on the rest of the paper. Moreover, we focus on polyhedral or piecewise linear and convex losses since their work shows that embedding can be done by a polyhedral loss. So our goal is to understand a natural tension that arises between consistency and dimension in embeddings. When restricting to consistent surrogates, um, we want these surrogates to be low dimensional uh, to make the optimization problem more efficient. But this natural tension arises as increasing dimensions increases the amount of degrees of freedom. And so our goal is to understand this tension. We say that a surrogate loss, capital L, um, embeds a target loss, little l, if there's an injection phi such that for all distributions over the outcome simplex, a report R minimizes the expected discrete loss if and only if its embedding minimizes the expected surrogate loss. And for all reports and outcomes, we require that the discrete and surrogate loss values match at R and the embedding of R, respectively. And so to have a concrete definition, we say that a loss is de-embeddable if there is a d-dimensional surrogate embedding it. And so one example of an embedding is the binary encoded prediction abstain surrogate introduced by Ramaswamy et al. in 2018. Their surrogate is a log n dimensional generalization of hinge loss that embeds each of the outcomes into a corner of the plus minus one hypercube with an abstain report at the origin. And so in four outcomes, this is a two dimensional loss where each of the reports goes to plus like one, one, minus one, one, minus one, minus one, and one, minus one, with the abstain report being at the origin zero, zero. And so as an outline for the rest of this talk, we will start with a full characterization of one embeddability, a uh, less tight, but more general D embeddability characterization. And then we will briefly turn our focus to a case study of the, case study of the abstain loss. So first, we learn that a discrete loss is one embeddable if there's an ordering of the reports such that 
The set of distributions where consecutive reports both minimize the expected loss over these distributions forms a hyperplane when intersected with the simplex. And so for intuition, suppose that each color on this three outcome simplex corresponds to a report. And the region of the simplex in that color is the set of distributions where the report minimizes the expected discrete loss. The black lines in between two colors is the boundary that we're interested in. Since each of these is a line in the two-dimensional reals, and thus a hyperplane intersected with the simplex, this loss is one embeddable. Moreover, this proof is constructive, and for the construction, we refer you to theorem 11 of the paper. Next, we show that a target loss is one embeddable if and only if there is a one-dimensional calibrated surrogate for it. And again, by previous work, this is true if and only if there's a one-dimensional consistent surrogate for it. Um, and so this bound is tight and uh, shows that, at least in the one-dimensional case, embedding is a sufficient tool to study consistency. And just for your information, if you have a property elicitation background, these statements are also equivalent to statements about the geometry of the property elicited by uh, script L. Next, we move on to our general de-embeddability characterization. And so in general dimensions, we give necessary and sufficient conditions for embeddings in terms of convex polytopes. Theorem 15 states that a discrete loss is de-embeddable if and only if there is a set of polytopes satisfying the following notions of monotonicity and optimality. In monotonicity, we want corresponding polytope the corresponding polytope is the subgradient of the surrogate loss at the embedded point, which is to say that for each report R, uh, we'll let script TR be a set of polytopes. Each one corresponds to an outcome. And TR sub Y should be this subgradient set of the surrogate L when reporting phi of R or the embedding of R and the outcome is y. For optimality, we want that for each report and every distribution p, the p-weighted Minkowski sum of the polytopes, uh, t, r, y, uh, contains a zero vector if and only if r minimizes the expected discrete loss over p. Observe that this characterization uh, involves a search over all possible polytopes in d-dimensional space, which is computationally hard. And so for the rest of this talk, we will give bounds in terms of a quadratic feasibility program relying on the presented optimality condition instead. Digging a bit deeper into the optimality constraint, we find two conditions that must be simultaneously satisfied in order for the optimality constraint to be satisfied. If we fix a report R and consider the distribution such that R minimizes the expected discrete loss, we know that this must be a convex polytope from previous work. And therefore, we can write this convex polytope, uh, we'll say CR, as either the intersection of a finite number of half spaces or the convex hull of a finite number of points. So first, we present our half space condition, which states that R should not optimize the expected discrete loss over a over distribution P if P is not in the convex polytope CR. And the vertex condition states that if P is in CR, then zero should be in the P-weighted Minkowski sum. And so for some intuition, we can say that there's a matrix B such that BP is greater than zero is equal to this cell CR that I'm outlining with the mouse. Um, and B would be defined by these half spaces where our vertex condition, we can enumerate the convex hull here um, and say that CR is uh, the convex hull of the distributions P1, P2, P3, and P4. And so the vertex constraint says that um, zero should be in the P weighted Minkowski sum when P is in uh, CR, and the half space constraint says that when P is not in CR, uh, that zero is not in the P-weighted Minkowski sum. 
And our theorem 16 shows that optimality conditions hold if and only if we can satisfy these uh, constraints simultaneously. So these conditions allow us to convert the optimality condition into a quadratic feasibility program, which we prove is equivalent. And so given a dimension D and a polytope C, which um, we abstract away the R here, but you can think of this as C R from the previous slide. Um, we have variables that are normals uh, to the half spaces and X1 to XL, which are witnesses. And so the constraints involve the half space condition given here and then the vertex condition given here. And theorem six, sorry, 18 says that optimality con conditions are satisfied if and only if the quadratic feasibility program has a feasible solution. And since this is an if and only if, it is computationally hard to get any nicer condition. So now we move into our case study for the abstain loss. Um, as we introduced earlier, we considered the discrete loss L alpha uh, that takes in reports R outcomes Y, and we assign punishment zero if the prediction is correct, alpha if uh, the report is to abstain, and one if we predict an outcome and are wrong. And so if we have three outcomes that we could choose from, we can say that if, in this case, we have alpha equals one half, and if the probability of any one outcome is greater than a half, then we should predict that outcome, and otherwise we should abstain, uh, given by the middle triangle. And so the surrogate from Ramaswamy et al. embeds uh, this discrete loss in the ceiling of log n dimensions, but current bounds on the convex calibration, and therefore uh, embedding dimension in a tighter case uh, have been given by Ramaswamy et al. in 2016, and this bounds the dimension between one and the ceiling of log n. Uh, but we can immediately show with our one dimensional characterization that for n great, greater than or equal to three, um, the, the dimension has to at least be two, since as we can see in this example, even. Um, we don't have hyperplanes in the surrogate. And our corollary 22 even generalizes so that for five or more outcomes and an alpha value of one half, we at least have to have three dimensions. And this can be verified with a numerical solver um, by trying to solve our quadratic feasibility program and considering the report R equals abstain. So in summary, this paper gives three primary contributions. First, we introduce a notion of embedding dimension. Second, we full show a full characterization of one embeddability, namely that embedding and calibration are equivalent in one dimension. And third, we give a new method for uh, understanding embedding dimension bounds in general dimensions. And so the primary open question that we have from this paper is that in one dimension, we have this embedding if and only if calibration condition. And the question is, does this generalize to general dimensions or higher dimensions? And so with that, I will conclude by thanking both my collaborators and our uh, university, as well as the National Science Foundation for funding. <laughs>